Today, I'm gonna show you how you can make this two ingredient boiled icing. I'm also gonna share what went wrong and then what went right. Hi, I'm Amanda Vandergulik from cleverdoughcakes.com and if you love baking and decorating cakes, then make sure that you hit subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you'll know the minute my next video comes out to help you with more yummy baking recipes and fun cake decorating ideas. All right, so let me show you how I made this boiled icing. Okay, so what happened was I actually made this wacky chocolate cake that you can see in this video here, and I wanted to create a really nice light and fluffy chocolate boiled icing to go on top. A friend of mine had sent me a picture recently of a cake that she had made, and she said that she'd used something called cooked icing icing and I was curious what was cooked icing so I did a quick search and I could not find cooked icing anywhere and she replied back when I asked her what on earth is cooked icing she said oh my goodness I'm sorry it's boiled icing so I looked it up and I'm like oh boiled icing I know what this is it's like a meringue icing to make a boiled icing it's similar to making an Italian meringue icing only you don't add the butter so let me walk you through the steps. It was quite the adventure. I really wanted to make it chocolate flavored. And so we had this bar of chocolate still left over and we thought, well, we'll melt the chocolate. So that's where the first mistake happened. Take a look at this. So in order to melt chocolate, what you do is you boil some water and then you put a pan, like a, a metal pot on top of the boiling water to melt the chocolate. But the trick is you have to turn the boiling water down before putting the pan on it or else this happens. <laughs> not good. You don't want any water in your chocolate or else you're not going to get good chocolate. So after you turn down the heat and you've placed your metal pan on top, put your chocolate in chunks at a time or if you have chips then a handful of chips at a time, stirring occasionally and it will slowly melt and then you take it off just before it finishes melting and it will continue to melt as you're stirring it. I put this aside and just let it cool. My plan was to pour this into my boiled icing when it was finished and yeah, I'm gonna show you what happened. It wasn't good. So now it was time to actually make the boiled icing. So what I did was take three quarter cup of white sugar, white granulated sugar, and a quarter cup of water from the tap and put that in another pan on the stove and brought that to a boil. Then I put a candy thermometer in the pan so I could keep track of how hot the sugar mixture was getting. While the sugar was starting to boil and reach the temperature, I started separating my eggs. I needed egg whites and not the egg yolks. So I actually set aside the egg yolks and made ice cream out of them later, which I might show you in another video. So make sure you do subscribe so that you'll know when I show you that one. Okay, so how it works is on your candy thermometer, you wait until the heat raises to 230 degrees Fahrenheit, and then you start whipping your egg whites. And then you keep on whipping them just on low speed, medium speed rather, until it reaches 240 degrees in Fahrenheit, at which time you'll remove it from the stove and pour it slowly into the mixer while it's still whipping the egg whites at that low speed. If you're using Celsius, I'll put the conversion in the description below for you. I have to admit that waiting for your sugar to reach the right temperature is like waiting for an egg to boil. It takes forever. <laughs> but you definitely wanna get it off the stove when it reaches 240 degrees Fahrenheit so that you're not making taffy <laughs> out of your sugar. So the reason that you want to pour in the sugar syrup very slowly into the mixer while beating the egg whites is because it will actually cook the egg whites so that you don't have to worry about eating uncooked egg whites. And it will make a really nice light fluffy meringue texture that is just delicious to eat. Then once all of the sugar has been added to your egg whites and everything has been mixed together and you want to whip it on high for eight to 10 minutes or until the whole bowl is completely cooled. The idea is to have your whipped egg meringue topping or your boiled icing nice and cooled while still whipped. So far, so good. Then <laughs> disaster struck. Two times. Okay, the first time what happened was after our meringue had cooled down, after the boiled icing had cooled down, 
we grabbed the chocolate that we'd melted and mixed it in, which sounded like a great idea at the time. But as you can see, the weight of the chocolate actually completely sagged the icing and we ended up with, it still tasted good, but an icing that would be more appropriate as maybe a poured icing <laughs> rather than a boiled icing and was not the texture that we were looking for. So we had to try again. So we tried again. We took the icing that had failed and we put it aside in a bowl and put it in the fridge, hoping that it might, I don't know, thicken up as it cooled, but it did not really. And eventually we just threw it out. So round two, this time we thought, okay, so maybe the melted chocolate was the problem. So this time we decided to make up a mixture with cocoa powder, some water, and also some coffee. We've decided why not make a, a mocha chocolate boiled icing. So we made a little paste and poured that into our sugar mixture before starting to boil. All was well, except that it boiled really high and we had to be careful for it not to boil over. The addition of the cocoa powder and the coffee definitely altered what was happening to our sugar crystals. So this was challenging and it also changed how quickly the sugar boiled and the egg whites were not whipped in time. And by the way, so that you know, I've got the ingredients and the measurements and everything in the description for you below, but it was four egg whites that we used. And so we got the sugar up to 230 degrees Fahrenheit again, whipped up our meringue, I started whipping it at 230 degrees, got the sugar up to 240 degrees and quickly brought it over, but it was cooking so fast because I guess of the, the cocoa and the coffee that was in there, that it actually got up to like 250 and started being more like a broken up little taffy. So you can see as we try to pour it in here into the, the, the whipped egg yolk or egg whites, that it's kind of breaking off as it's falling in. And this did not turn out well. <laughs> As you can see, it actually completely deflated the boiled icing and made it into a syrup instead. So not a good turn of events. So it was time for our third time. They always say <laughs> third time's a charm, right? Well, in this case, we got lucky and third time was definitely a charm with our boiled icing. So once again, four egg whites, in our mixer, ready to turn on, not turning it on yet. Three quarters of a cup of white sugar crystals with that quarter cup of water. Nothing more, nothing less added. What we did is we created a little mixture of just the coffee in a tiny bit of water that we were going to fold in once we were done. So <laughs> this is what we did. We brought the sugar up to three, 230 degrees Fahrenheit, started the whipping, whipped up the egg whites. When the sugar reached 240 degrees Fahrenheit, we brought it quickly over to the mixer and poured it in gently, and it was going perfectly. It, we got it all in, it cooked the eggs properly, and it whipped up beautifully, light, fluffy, marshmallowy, like a meringue. And then we cooled it down for the eight minutes, and then, Yes, we were smart this time. <laughs> Instead of putting all of the flavor in and ruining yet again a complete batch of boiled icing, this time we decided to take one spoon of the icing in a separate bowl and try a little bit of our mocha concoction <laughs> and see if it would work. And it actually worked really well, look at this. So we mixed in the mocha flavoring, which was literally just coffee crystals and uh, dissolved in water and but thick like a paste so that it wouldn't make it runny folded it through with the spoon and it worked out perfectly so then took a deep breath and mixed that into our boiled icing and we were both holding our breaths my wife and i were <laughs> waiting for the boiled icing to sink yet again but it didn't it held its form it was so delicious so fluffy it, we were waiting, this is days later, we, we literally just kept trying every single day. 
And by then, our wacky chocolate cake had long been eaten and was gone. But my wife's birthday was on that day that it actually worked. And we had made an angel food cake from a box, which you can see next week. I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. Well, I'll show it to you next week how we did her angel food cake. And this boiled icing or like whipped meringue icing with the mocha flavoring was such a good match for the angel food cake. It was, it turned out to be just an amazing cake for my wife's quarantined birthday. So uh, here, <laughs> why don't I show you a little bit of the chocolate wacky cake that you missed out on in this video. You can go and watch that and then make sure that you are subscribed and hit that notification bell so that you'll get to see next week when I show you how to make the angel food cake from a box. Plus, I didn't have a bunch pan, so I had to create my own version of a bunch pan. Check it out.